Alright, welcome back guys. Today we're going to be restarting the Rayman tutorial series. Uh, the first video is pretty much just project setup and getting a player controller working. I've already got a project here that I'm using for the tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to go over how to do all this. So the video is going to be quite short, but it is going to still explain how to do all this stuff. So let's get right into it. Uh, first thing we're going to do for project setup is we want a blueprints folder, a levels folder, a meshes folder, a sound effects folder. Inside the meshes we have a skeletal folder and a static folder. Inside blueprints we have game modes, interfaces, pawns, player controllers, and save games. And levels is just this. This is just where you'll save all your levels. If you have like subsections, you might want to do like a folder like, uh, I don't know, Hub World, the Marshes, etc. Uh, sound effects, I have basic and music. Anyway, so inside Blueprints, you want all these folders game modes, interfaces, pawns, player controllers, save games. So inside game modes, we have, we went and created a game mode base we named it BP Rayman game. Inside of player controllers we added a a player controller we named it BP Rayman controller. There's no code in the game in the game mode or the player controller. Inside pawns we went in here and we created a character. And inside game mode you want to go in there and you want to set your default classes. So for uh, what is it? Player controller class class. You're gonna want to set this to the Rayman controller you created. And for your default pawn class, you're gonna want to set this to the Rayman pawn you created. All right. Then for uh, our project settings, we're gonna set up a few things. Maps and modes. You're gonna want to make sure default game mode is set to BP Rayman game. And for your default maps, you're going to want to do whatever map you want here. I'm, I have it as the map that we first start with. I just added a cube in for testing. Uh, you're going to want to set that to your editor startup map. For game default map, you don't have to set it the same. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. Now inside of engine input, we're going to add a few action mappings and axis mappings. So for axis, action mappings, we want a jump which I said is spacebar and gamepad face button bottom which would be X uh, for PlayStation B for switch and I think uh, a for Xbox uh, we're gonna want to walk this is specifically only for PC so I have it as left control attack is gonna be left mouse button or whatever you want and gamepad face button left which would be square on PS Y on switch and uh, I think X on Xbox axis mappings you want your forward movement your right movement your vertical camera horizontal camera inside of forward movement we have W with a scale of 1 we have S with a scale of negative 1 and then we have gamepad left thumbstick Y axis so that's your left thumbstick and it's the up and down you don't have to adjust anything on the scale because that does it itself. Uh, right movement, we have D with a 1 on the scale, A with a negative 1 on the scale, and left thumbstick X. Then we have vertical camera with mouse Y and gamepad right thumbstick Y axis. Then we have horizontal camera with mouse X and gamepad right thumbstick X axis. Now we can get into setting up the player pawn. So what I did is I created a cylinder because we don't have a skeletal mesh with animations yet. So I set up a cylinder for our test mesh so we can see. And I also put an arrow so you can see the direction he's facing. And if you want to see that arrow in game, you want to make sure that hidden in game is unchecked. It'll be checked by default. I also added a spring arm and I set it to use pawn control rotation 
Make sure that is checked or else the camera movement is not going to work. Then I added a camera on top of the spring arm. And inside of BP Rayman Pawn, you want to make sure that this use controller rotation yaw is unchecked. If you have that checked, the character will follow your mouse direction. And you don't want that unless you're in a first person shooter or some third person game that would use it like a third person shooter and whatnot. Uh, we also need to do some setup and character movement. So uh, one thing you want to do is rotation. You want to do orient rotation to movement. That means that where, like, whichever direction the player is moving, he will rotate in that direction. You're going right, he'll rotate right. You're going backwards, he'll rotate towards the camera, etc. Uh, the if you want to, you can adjust the rotation rate Z. I put mine to 1080. That makes the rotation much snappier. By default, it's at 360, which is really slow rotation. All right, let's go into the invent graph. So. First things first, we want to set up the camera movement. Here we have horizontal camera, and we have that hooked into add controller, yaw, and put. This would be your uh, left right movement on your camera or your Z rotation. Then we have the vertical camera, at, and we have that into the pitch input, which is your up down camera movement or your uh, XY, whatnot. Then we have movement, which is forward movement and right movement. We have those hooked into add movement input and the axis value is in the scale value for both of these. For our forward vector and right vector I actually have this set up to use a camera. This variable is a uh, camera component not a camera actor but a camera component which would be if you search up camera I guess search up camera component would be easier. If you search up camera component and just do object reference, that's what you'll get. Then I plug that to get world rotation. Then we break the rotator, get the Z only. If we get the X or Y, if you look downward, uh, the player will start moving very slowly because it's trying to move in the direction of the camera. So it fucks up. Then from this make rotator, we want to get the forward vector and the right vector. And we plug that into the outputs. And if you want to name these, you click on the outputs, forward vec, right vec. Uh, this is a macro. To create the macro, you go down here and plus, you press that little plus button. You don't have to have this in a macro. If you want, you can just take this code right here, these blueprints, and just plug them in like that. The macro just makes it cleaner. Now for our jump, I have an event jump. This is a more customized jump rather than just using the uh, jump function they have. I do this because we can use this for uh, multiple things. We can call it on the player from another object. Let's say we uh, send a message to the player and we, like, I don't know, we're on a springboard or some kind of jumping platform we can use event jump and we can tell it how high we want it to launch it or which x y we want to launch it to that's all this really is make sure you have z override checked so uh, we want to get our input action jump that we had just plug it into our event jump make a variable call it max jump I mine set at 2000 you'll see why Actually, we'll show you why first. If you have it set to like a thousand or lower, your character has a very, very tiny jump. Why this is because we set our own custom gravity up, which we'll be going over in a second. Two thousand, your character jumps like this. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show you what it's like without the expo gravity, and this is why you would want the gravity as is. Uh, here, let's set this to a reasonable amount real quick. I, I don't know. I think that's the default jump that it has you at. You'll see that your character is very floaty as if he's on the moon. And this is with the default gravity settings and whatnot. Which really sucks. So, 
once you have this all set up, right, we want to create our Expo Gravity. I call the event Expo Gravity. First, you want to take the character movement and you want to set gravity scale to 2. Then you want to go into a timeline. You want to play from start. Inside this timeline, it's very simple. We have a length of 0.5. We have a float track. And we start out at 2. The zero time, we start at 2. And at the very end, we go to 7 or whatever you want it to. And that's the time of 0.15. In the middle here, we have a little curve to like and just add a little bit more to it you can adjust this however you want to you can make it a very steep increase yeah you, know, you can do this with it and have it go I don't know do like this which would uh, look Oops, uh, let's replug that in real quick. Which would look like this. It's really just how you want the jump arc to look like. Anyway, inside character movement, right, we want to go set up a couple things. One, set gravity scale to two. I, f I forgot to do that. But, uh, and jumping falling. We don't want to mess with this. We don't care. Air control, we want that as a 1. Falling lateral friction. What this is, if we set this to 0, if we set this to 0, right? If you let go while in air, your character will keep going. Now, if you want that, keep it. A lot of people like more precise movement in platforms, though, so you can set this like to 1. I think it'll still have a little bit of like forward, but it won't be as much. Or you can set this to what I had it at is five, and it'll stop pretty much instantly after you let go. So, to get the expo gravity to go, we want to we want to grab out the event on launched and the event on walking off ledge. So, what that does, so our jump is actually just a launch, right? Instead of the like actual jump function, which I'm pretty sure the actual jump function itself is also just a launch in the uh, actual C++ side of it. But what that does, right, is whenever we jump or launched from whatever source, the expo gravity gets called. If we fall off a ledge, the expo gravity gets called. So anytime we get in the air from any point, the gravity gets called, so it's not that really nasty, slow-moving gravity. And this is all the uh, end of expo gravity, is it just does that. Um, that's really all the code is for this and you get this really nice moving player controller that's perfect for platformers oh yeah I guess yeah that's one thing I forgot to do so in this right you're gonna want to do a branch And you're going to want to get is falling. And you're going to want to check if it's not falling. So we can just keep that plugged into true. And now he won't be able to. Constantly jump in the air. Now that we like this, this is the full player controller. This is it. I will provide the uh, blueprints, all of them, and a link in the description if you uh, don't feel like following along with this. Uh, Next video, we're going to go over simple collectibles.
which is where we'll start using the player controller a bit more. Uh, and I think like we may go over health, health system. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed the video and that's it. See you guys.